Thompson. Harry Bowman. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Please. Welcome back to St Neots Golf Course. We are a week ahead. No, I'm joking. We are about 50 yards from where we finished the last video. It's still a beautiful day. I am currently level par after nine holes, so we're looking to go under par for the back nine. And we start the 10th hole with a gentle little dog leg round to the left hand side. So three wood off the tee for placement. Let's see if we can start with a birdie. If you're planning on coming and playing over at St Neots, one thing I would definitely recommend that you practice a bit before you come here is your approach play from 120 yards and in. I feel like because there's quite a lot of holes where you're placing the ball in a particular spot to then play into the green from there, you really need to be hot on your approach play from those kind of distances. You're going to have a lot of shots from there, so we want to have plenty of opportunities to make putts, make birdies, and if you practice that 120 and in kind of distance, I think you'll hit it a lot closer to the hole, give yourself more chances and shoot a better score. Ace cam, ace cam, ace cam, ace cam. <laughs> this is a frustrating ace cam because I'm I'm not going to get the glory of me seeing the ball go in the hole because there's a hump in front of us. So if it does trickle in from 221 yards, it'll still be epic because I still would have made a hole in one. But you always want to see it go in. Anywho, ace cam. A question that we got asked to ask Ali, our resident fitness guru, PT to the rich and famous, and occasionally to me, was depending on what time of day you're playing, what should you do differently with your pre-round and in-round and post-round nutrition to make sure that you're in prime condition to play? So, you always want to make sure that you start off having a good feed pre-round. Just think of it like a workout basically. So you want a pre-workout meal. Um, make sure it's got complex carbohydrates in there to give you enough energy to fuel you all the way around. You might want to add in some protein as well so that you can repair your muscles as you go around too and avoid muscle fatigue. Then when you're going around, obviously make sure you've got enough snacks with you. Again, protein based, something like Beef jerky is always a really good one. Nice, nice lean yeah. protein snack. You don't even need to prepare it. Literally just grab a packet, put it in your bag. It lasts in the heat as well, so that's a really good one. Um, things like bananas, great for carbohydrate highs, a little bit of an energy boost, but it's a healthy one. So your blood sugar levels don't spike too high and then dip too low. And then um, obviously stay really hydrated um, to keep your muscles nice and lubricated as you go around keep everything working and taking over. And then afterwards, make sure you have a nice post round meal. Obviously, if you're at a nice club, you might get one included, which yep. would be great. Um, again, protein, carbohydrates and fats in there and lots of vegetables, nourish yourself. Really think about it, you know, like think of yourself as an athlete. Athletes wouldn't just go out there, you know, and just eat anything. Really like failure to prepare is always, a good motto 
So if you're struggling to get around, struggling to have energy, then really think about your nutrition and hydration and that might really help your play, um, especially with consistency throughout the whole round. So if you're starting off really well, getting tired near the end or you're having a bit of an energy dip, that's something that you should definitely look at. Prepare, like yeah. you said. Just think about every element of the sport as well, not just you know getting the ball in the hole. Like think about everything. Like if you're struggling with a certain element of the game, think about why and think have a holistic approach as to which element you could change or have some control over that might help your game. Especially if one time you're really good and the next time you're not, and you're wondering what the difference is in that consistency. Think about how much you slept before. Did you have your full eight hours? Were you in a good mood? What time did you start playing? How much food have you had? Are you hydrated? All of those things do actually play a huge role in it. So if you can, you know, take a little bit more control over these things, hopefully you'll see a big improvement in your game. So, Ali's also posted some really cool recipes and stuff on her mm. channel. So make sure you do go and follow Fit and Flexi on YouTube. I'll put a link to it up in the corner of this video. Today is a very warm day, summer's day, so it's beautiful for golf, but can be difficult to keep energy levels up. So for me, I always feel like drink is a big part of that. Would you agree? Is that is that something that's gonna really Yeah, definitely. Help? You wanna stay hydrated, obviously, mm. so you've got enough energy to play. You don't want your muscles to start cramping up. Mm. So I think uh, one thing that can really help you here is thinking about what you're drinking. You could just drink water, depending on what you're eating, but be careful about just washing all of the electrolytes out of your system. So maybe try to go more for an isotonic drink, even just like LucasAid Sport or something. Or you could add some of your own salts and things like that to water to keep you hydrated and keep your body full of nutrients like potassium and sodium. And that's going to give you the best energy boost. I guess that's why bananas are pretty good as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. For me personally, anyway, I find I love drinking water, but I, I do find that if I drink too much of it, it actually does the opposite and I feel more dehydrated having drunk loads than I would do if I've not drunk much. Yeah, you're then just going to start craving things, um, yeah. especially like sweet things or salty things, and that's when you're going to reach for those snacks. And... Harry Bone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Please. Just like I said back on the 11th green, I think it was, real premium if you're going to come and play here on practicing those approach shots, so 120 yards and in. This is a prime example. I've hit a great tee shot. We've got 117 yards to the flag. If you haven't played this golf course before, a little tip for you if you are playing the 15th here at St. Neitz. The green here is quite undulating. It's like a BMX track or something. Where the flag is today is in, in the sort of middle of a little bowl here. So if you hit it too far slightly right or too far slightly left, you're going to give yourself, you're actually going to end up further away from the hole. And it could make a half decent shot look pretty average. So I'm actually going to play slightly right of the hole because the the, uh, the gully that the, the hole's in kind of goes across the green like this, so it could just sort of feed around to the left. And Eagle Cam. I really, really, really wish this camera had a zoom because that is. It looks like about two feet away. Just going to try and see if I can show you the undulation level here. So over there, it kind of comes up, a little hump. There's that gully going across there, another hump, and over the cross there. So 
had I hit it slightly too far over to the left hand side here the ball was going to feed off and it's going to make like I said a pretty good shot look average and the same over on this side if I hit it up here somewhere it's just going to fall off to the right hand side again making a pretty decent shot look average it's a bit further away than I thought it's not quite the two footer but it's what five feet not bad <laughs> Cheerleading at golf, so that should be a new thing. <laughs> Choreographed moves, especially from Ali T. She is, as well as being a PT, fitness guru, nutrition specialist, dancer, she is a professional cheerleading coach from Pineapple Dance Studios in London. Partners, wives, girlfriends, or yourselves want to try out some dance moves, Ali T does a boot camp on Saturday mornings so check out her channel and you'll be able to see some footage of that. They're wicked by the way, I often do them by the side, try and get my JLo moves on and stuff like that. Oh, I've learned some great dance moves over lockdown so if there's something that's come out of it it's definitely that. Are there any other um, books that you would recommend based on golf tips or knowledge or mindset or podcasts that you've been listening to? I listen to a lot of golf podcasts but not necessarily because of like tips and stuff like that although there's some really good Sky Sports golf ones actually. Golf Chats With, they're really cool. They did one with Butch Harmon so if you're a golf coach or you're interested in golf coaching that was a really interesting one to, to listen to. He was, um, he was cool to hear about. Uh, and some of the other guys that they just generally have on the show, they're good to listen to. Nick Doherty is a good one as well. Other golf podcasts, No Laying Up is a good one as well. Those are some American guys. None of those are like good players at all. But they, oh, I mean, they're decent handicap players, but they're not pros or anything. Uh, but they just talk about golf, talk about the PGA Tour predominantly. That's a good one. There's a good one which one of my um, pupils, Luke, actually recommended to me which is with Max Homer who plays on the PGA Tour. The name of it escapes me but if you type, type in Max Homer on, uh, on on any podcast thing you should find out some information about that one. What? We also um, recently we watched Back to Tiger Woods didn't we? Oh yeah that we was watched really that good documentary on Netflix. On, yeah. um, that was Sky yeah. yeah that was, really that good. was a really good one yeah so you should definitely watch that one. Done. That is the end of the back nine here at St Neots Golf Club. I played quite nicely. I missed a lot of opportunities on a back nine to go a little bit lower, but finish at two under. Pretty pleased with that score. You're always pleased if you shoot under par somewhere, particularly a golf course like this, where, as I've said all the way around, it's all about putting the ball in the right place off the tee. Ali, what's your thoughts? Yeah, it's really nice. Well, well played. That was good. It's a difficult one to play because, like you said, there's a lot of dog legs. So um, it's not one of those just like aim and shoot golf courses. You've kind of got to know what you're doing and know your way around it. That is 18 holes completed then at St Neots Golf Course. Like the course, I think it's a nice place to go and play golf. It is quite tricky, can be a little bit kind of fiddly for want of a better description because you have to really put the ball in good spots off the tee. But if you do that, and you give yourself good opportunities to play into greens most of the approach shots aren't crazy long if you play 
half decent off the tee like I have done today, you're going to give yourself a good opportunity to make a good score. Make sure you stay really hydrated when it's warm and humid uh, to make sure that you don't start to flag towards the end of the round. Once again, if you like this video, make sure you do give it a thumbs up and if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, that would be fantastic. If you can also subscribe to Ali T's channel as well, you will be able to see lots more fitness and nutrition, some recipes and things like that. Perfect things to take out on the golf course with you. So we will see you again for another review video very soon.